What is going on guys? This is Doug with 4-Wheel Drive Trek and today I'm finally getting to do something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. Throw in this twin ARB air compressor. I'm going to be running some hardline hoses, putting a valve in each of these fender wells here. So then all I have to do is hook up a little hose over to my tire and that is it. Obviously we're going to have a lot of connection to hook together so I got a whole bunch of stuff that should make this kit work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link every single one of these items in the description below. So we got tire pressure gauge, clamps to hook the hoses up, a clamp to hook the hose up, couple elbows, couple uh, quarter inch NPT into barb, some extra chucks, extra hookups, and these are the Schrader valve quick connect. I'm really excited about there. And I'll explain a little more on that in just a minute. I'm going to be doing all of this inside of a Jeep Wrangler JK. After the air compressor is finally mounted in here, everything else afterwards can be done on any vehicle. It doesn't have to be just a Jeep for that. Uh, all these parts are universal, so that part we're going to jump to and I'll show you that. Obviously the first thing I got to do is get this air compressor mounted up inside of here. Shout out to Barnes 4 Wheel Drive. For me to uh, get this little bracket here I could throw in it and mount up the air compressor right here underneath the hood. So I am opting to go for a 3 8 inside diameter hose. And that's what the, all the adapters are going to be. That's what everything is going to be for the entire system. Hoses that usually come with a uh, ARB twin air compressor or any other real air compressor are usually a quarter inch. However, because I want to air up and down all in unison, uh, I'm up to go for the 3 8 to get that little extra airflow and extra capacity through there. All right, so now that the air compressor is mounted, it is time to start working on this manifold here. And I got some 90 degree bends here. Definitely want to get some of this Teflon tape here. This is going to help out a lot to seal up the threads. I'm going to want to have a quick release air chuck right at the uh, side of the, the Jeep here. So if I want to hook up air tools or things of that sort, I can definitely do so. Oh. <laughs> All right, that hurt my hand a little bit. Ended up breaking my thumb a little bit ago um, working on the Mustang. I'm gonna put this uh, little gauge on it. I wanna have a gauge that's permanently mounted in there so I don't have to hook up another gauge here and there. All right, there we go. So we got chuck on one side, pressure on the other side. I just gotta hook up these uh, little guys here. All right, and there we go. Got the little manifold here. Got the uh, quick release chuck on one side, got the pressure release valve, got the out hose, got it blocked off for, you know, air tank, and I got the intake hose, little guy here for telling me what the pressure is. Now just taking a piece of flat steel here, bolted it on, and now, put it right hand on in. Now I gotta hook some hoses up. First thing we're gonna do is get the air compressor hose hooked in. Of course, you can't put a hose just straight up and down. It's gonna hit the hood here, so 90 degree bend it is. I'm using 3 8 inside diameter hose here, and it is uh, not just the hose, it's a high pressure hose made for uh, 300 PSI uh, max which this guy's gonna pump out 150 PSI, so this is gonna be plenty. I'm gonna go throw this guy on there now. For the individual hookups down uh, in the fender wells, I'm gonna use Schrader valves. Look familiar? As you can see, these valves are the identical to what your valve stems are. They're just, you know, on a piece of metal instead of your wheel itself. The limiting factor inside the whole system of airing up and airing down your tires is actually this Schrader valve here. It is your valve stem. Now, if you had the uh, higher pressure valves, um, like David JK Switchback, he has the, like the big old giant valves in there that he can open up and air up and air down in like 40 seconds. Lucky enough for me, I actually take my Jeep off-road and I go wheeling with it. So inside the fender wells, you can actually see exactly where I rub. So that's where my tires are gonna be when I'm off-road. So if I put this guy right here, it's gonna be up and out of the way. It won't get rubbed on or anything like that. So I'm pretty sure that's where I wanna put it. So 
I'm going to put a hole through here and I'm going to get this guy mounted up and installed. Now that I've got the hole drilled, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Schrader valve, take a female end with a 3 8 barb because the hose is a 3 8 and I'm going to sandwich that uh, the inner fender liner between the two of these, tighten it down, and that's all the securing that we're going to need for that. Obviously, once I do it, I am going to put some Teflon tape on there. Now, you can do this with your stock inner fender liners. I just have the aftermarket ones that are metal. The inner ones are uh, plastic from factories, so you can still do it with that. So now i got to take an air hose and bring it from the manifold. I'm going to drop it straight down underneath the Jeep. And then there's a little uh, bar that I can actually mount it to. I'm basically, I'm taking the uh, hose, putting it into one of these four-way kind of adapters, and then splitting it out to the fronts, to the rears, and then either side of the fronts. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hose, I put the uh, adapter on it, and put it up against this uh, crossbar here. So that way I have a hose that can come each direction, and then one can go back to the back of the uh, car here. <laughs> okay. Uh, that turned out better than I thought it was going to be. I really, really love the look of that right there. And it's super easy access to reach the tire. Oh, uh, that is perfect. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I need to measure out in between where I want to put that crossfitting. All right, jumping up underneath here, we're going to have this hose coming out. Now I have to have one hose going to the front of the vehicle. And one hose is going to go to the back of the vehicle. I need to mount this cross somewhere up in here. The best thing to do is to keep it as far away from the exhaust as you can. I'll mount it up underneath the uh, floor pin here and uh, I should be able to keep it away from the exhaust and then that way I can run it all the way down through the center without touching the exhaust and then up and over the skid plates onto the other side. The final piece I need to do is add in an air chuck. Uh, I want to be able to help out people that are, say, behind me or in front of me, so I put the air chuck on the front. Now it's time to put an air chuck on the back. I had debated on where I wanted to put it for a long time, and I just realized I think that spot right there is going to be just about perfect. I'll get it as low as I can. It should be able to clear the tire, and that is going to be easy, and it'll keep it up out of the way and discreet. Ah, uh, easy. That's perfect. Uh... Plenty of clearance, plenty of clearance for my tire, and very, very discreet, won't even notice it's there, so I guess that's where I'm going to put it. There we go. Got myself an air chuck right here in the back, which is awesome. And you can't even notice it. I like that. Now that the entire system is plumbed, mounted, installed, it is time to work on the individual hoses. I got a bunch of these. These are quick release chucks. So you slide over the valve stem, oh, slide it down, it clips on, so you don't have to screw it on every single time. So I'm gonna make eight of these guys, because you got two for each hose and a hose for each tire, so for eight, Basically, just throw some of this Teflon tape on there, screw them on, tighten them up, make them all, make all eight, and then we start uh, measuring out some hoses. So you're gonna want to take your first chuck and actually just put it in there. That way you can clip it into the side there, and then measure out how long you need to get to the wheel well. Hook this guy in. Measure out how long it's gonna be. Now you want to give yourself plenty of slack on here. Remember, as your tires are spinning, when you stop, the valve can, stem can be here, here, or as far as it can be all the way down over there. So I'm going to do it to the farthest reach all the way out, and then give it a couple extra inches. Since the front ones are going to be longer than the back, I'm going to cut all four of them down to the exact same length, so I know when I grab them out of the back of the Jeep, it's not going to be like which one's the short ones, which one's the ones specifically for the rears. They're all going to be the same for all of them. There we go. Got all four of them done here. And I guess it's the moment of truth. Plug them in. 
see if they work. I should probably wire up the ARB compressor first before I do that. Okay, so it's been been a few weeks. Uh, I've gone out, I've tested it out a couple times, and I've nip, nip and tucked a few things. The hose clamps in the engine bay weren't quite um, tightened down enough, so it blew the hose off a couple times, but because the engine bay heated up the hoses a little bit, they shrunk and like expanded and molded a little bit, but I tightened them up and it is good to go. So let me show you how it goes. And what I love absolutely best about this setup, these are all the the hoses that you need. You don't have to uncoil a whole bunch, don't have to spread them all out, or those slinky type ones where they kind of like, uh, they're all curled up together and you pull them out like a slinky. I absolutely hate having to untangle those things. I'm gonna find a better way to uh, kind of store these in there, but that is all you gotta grab. These hoses here, there's four of them, and hook them up individually. Everything hooked up, and we're actually airing it down right now. All four corners are hooked up to the same system. You can see here, so now, I'm doing a whole air down. We are at 32 PSI on the entire system all the way through. That means all four tires are sitting at that. And the goal is to air them down. Um, I usually hit 18, and I don't know if you guys can see the tires. They're actually airing down quite a bit right now, really, really fast. So, yeah, this is awesome. Well, I'm not on beadlock, so that's what I run is 18 PSI. But sometimes, uh, you know, in the snow, we drop down a little bit lower. manifold does show a lot higher of a pressure than what the actual uh, reading is. That's because the air pressure is being pushed through the manifold, which is a higher pressure, and then going down into the tires and filling up the tires. So what you see on the manifold isn't quite exactly correct. For when I check on it, I just turn my air compressor on and off by pushing this button right here. And pretty much what it does is uh, it levels out all the pressure inside the tires and the manifold and all the system. And that'll tell me exactly what the tires are at. And remember, that's a pressure for all four tires and not just one. So while this is going up, I'm stopping it here at two minutes, four minutes, and then five minutes, just to kind of give you an idea of exactly how fast it's airing everything up. So including hooking the tires up, uh, it was under six minutes to air every single tire up from 18 PSI to 32 PSI. I gotta say, that is pretty great. Um, and you only have to have to bend down and hook every tire up once. You don't have to keep stamp down there and measure them out um, so I think that is really, really quick. And then airing down all four tires in, what, two and a half minutes is great. And everything is all the same PSI, which is great for on-road handling uh, as you drive to and from the trail. And that's gonna do it for the awesome, awesome onboard setup today. I linked everything in the description below for you so you know everything that I ordered from this kit. And you can buy every single one of these items on Amazon. I'm going to link that in the description below for you guys. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. And we are going to see you guys next time.